We give reverence to the Most High God. We give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And to all of my father's children, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. If you have your Bibles, let me take you to a scripture that we all should know and be familiar with. Amen. Let's go back. To Matthew chapter 28 and we want to focus on verses 19 and 20 Matthew's gospel the 28th chapter the 19th and 20th verses when you find it let me know by saying amen, amen. if you're still looking let me know by saying wait on me Amen. I heard a few amens. I didn't hear any waits, but I heard some mumbling. Amen. <laughs> Y'all think just because my head down, I'll be listening, but I'll be listening. <laughs> so let's try this again. If you're at our scriptor scriptural destiny, let me know by saying amen. amen. And if you're still looking, let me know by saying wait on me. Amen. Sounds good. The Bible says. Jesus says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Is that not what your Bible says? Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit and from the aid of your prayers for a few moments of your time, I want to talk about Back to Basics Part 2, the Great Commission. Take your seats and pray with me. Eternal God and our Father, our Lord and our Savior, it is preaching time now and as always, Master, we need the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Father, first and foremost, I pray that Terrence Grooms decrease, that Jesus Christ might increase, that your name be magnified, your people be edified, and in the end, some soul might be saved. Lord, I ask for a fresh anointing on this earthen vessel that I might be cleansed from the innermost parts of my body to the outermost parts of my soul, that I am a clean conduit of your word, that your word can flow through freely. I pray that you bless your people, Lord, that your word will fall on fertile ground, that believers are made stronger and non-believers come into the amazing grace of Jesus the Christ. Holy Ghost, speak to us and through us that you might get the glory out of us. Finally, Master, we pray that you bind the adversary that we might be able to do what you've commissioned us to do on this side of Zion. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Can I talk to you this Sunday morning? I want to talk about back to basics. The great commission. There is an old saying. Let the main thing be the main thing. 
And the problem is sometimes in our lives we get distracted and we're not focused on the main thing. God has equipped all of us to fulfill the destiny he has for our lives. But what causes us to miss the mark if we've been distracted by the main thing. God has presented before us ample opportunity, the perfect training and everything we need in our lives to be who God wants us to be. Uh, he has already placed it there. But the difference is uh, we got to make sure we steady the course by being focused on what call God called us to do. I once heard a preacher say that one of the reasons why there's not a lot of fighting in the church is because they keep the church busy. But I want you to understand busy work is not always the best work. Sometimes you can be busy doing so much until you're not doing what God has called and commissioned you to do and that's what I want to remind you this Sunday morning that oftentimes the devil gets us off course is by putting distractions in our lives the reason why the church loses its effectiveness is not because the church has lost its power the church has simply lost its focus the reason why we don't bring people in by the droves is not because God is not good we just stop doing a good work the reason why oftentimes we got more people in jail than we do in the house of God is because not because God is not in the saving business because he can still save anybody but we have become so distracted in the things of this world that we are not allowing the main thing to be the main thing anymore distractions keep us from doing the work of God can I talk about distractions for a moment because in reality, there are four major distractions in the church. And if you're not careful, those four major distractions become four major sins. You might as well say amen. Sometimes you could be focused on the wrong thing so much uh, until that wrong thing becomes priority in your life. And now that wrong thing becomes the sin in your life. There are four things that often takes our mind off of what God called us to do. The first distraction in the church is the distraction of who gets the credit. Should have been more eight man than that. See, the reality of it all is oftentimes people function in the church not because of purpose, but because of personality and because they like this person and because they click with this person, because they glean with this person. As long as that person gets the credit, I don't mind working in that function. We have to deal with the fact that we got people in our lives that the reason why they do things for you is so that you can pat them on the back. We got folk in the church that function in their office just so that you can call their name. We got people in the congregation that the reason why they show up is because they want to be seen and when you function based on who gets the credit baby you're functioning in the midst of distraction because when you deal with who gets the credit it becomes all about that person but don't you realize it does not matter who gets the credit it's about God getting the glory it doesn't matter if the preacher gets the credit as long as God gets the glory it doesn't matter if God if the people get the credit as long as God gets the glory it's not about the people it's about the savior too often we sit on our stool or do nothing because with nobody gonna call my name last time I checked there was no salvation in your name can I be honest there's no salvation in my name so who cares about who gets the credit let God get the glory because that's where the healing comes from. Uh, and so stop worrying about who gets the credit. That's just a distraction that the devil puts in your way. Because when you, when you get the credit, you'll serve well. And when you don't get the credit, you'll stop serving at all. But the last time I checked, God will give us breath whether we give him praise or not. God will make the sunrise whether we give him credit or not. You see, God is not like us. God always does what he's supposed to do because God recognizes what I'm doing is for your benefit. And that's why we who are on this side got to give God the glory no matter who gets the credit because it is God that woke me up this morning. So I give him the glory. It is God that revitalizes my soul. So I give him the glory. It is God that refreshes my spirit. So I give him the glory. I don't care about credit. Credit. Let God get the glory. We are distracted by who gets the credit. We also are distracted by who's in control. We might as well say amen. 
because oftentimes one of the things that cause us to function is by who's in charge of that function. Whew. Amen, lights in here. You hear me? You know how we get uh, if we like the person that's in charge. Uh, we don't mind working with that person. Uh, and we got to realize that we got to get beyond who's in charge uh, and who's in control. Because uh, the last time I checked, uh, there's only one person in charge of the church. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I love the way we function. Uh, we don't function with the name of board uh, because boards mean you're in charge of something. Uh, we function in the name of ministries because uh, ministries are service. Uh, when you function under a board, uh, the board's in charge. Uh, but when you function under service, Service, uh, you know that Jesus is in charge, uh, that great shepherd of sheep. Uh, we got to stop worrying about who's in charge because uh, there's only one person in charge of the church. One of the problems with Western church is we become so organizational and functional until we've organized our way out of God's purpose. We're so concerned about doing things the way corporate America does it. But the last time I checked, God never described the church like Bank of America. God never described the church like our government. God never described the church like Wells Fargo. No, God not, did not describe the church like an organization. He described it like an organism. He said the church is many members of one body. And the last time I checked, when I look at the human body, the brain doesn't tell the lungs, I'm not going to operate because I'm not in control. It just keeps sending signals. Uh, the lungs doesn't tell the heart. Uh, I'm not going to operate because I'm, I'm not in control. Uh, it just keeps giving you air. The heart doesn't tell the kidney. Uh, I'm not going to operate because I'm in control. Uh, it just keeps pumping the blood. Uh, the kidney doesn't tell the fingers. Uh, I'm not going to operate because I'm not in control. Uh, it just keeps cleansing the blood. Uh, we got to understand uh, we are many members of one body. And it's not about who's in control. Uh, it's about how we function together. Because uh, the brain recognizes uh, if I do my part. Uh, the heart will make me stronger the heart recognizes uh, if I do my part uh, the lungs will make me better uh, the kidneys recognize uh, if I do my part uh, the fingers can get me where I need to be uh, we gotta stop worrying about who's in control uh, God is in control uh, we just gotta do our part but when you function by who's in control when you function by who's over what you're functioning under the distraction of the devil because now order has taken the place of purpose and order is a good thing but the devil's kingdom is organized also you'll catch that one tomorrow we are distracted by who gets the credit we are distracted by who's in control can I get real in the house we are distracted by who spends the money and where does the money go? We might as well say amen. amen. One of the things that bothers me about Afro-American colored church is we will vote somebody in office, put them in charge of something, and then not trust them to do their job. Amen. You might as well say amen. You've been around church folk all your life. And we got to understand that if we're going to function the way God wants us to function, we can't worry about who's in, if we, God blessed us uh, to put them there, then we got to trust who God put them there. But that's not just the problem with the church. Uh, we don't just worry about who's spending the money. We want to worry about where the money is going. Uh, and the problem that we have is oftentimes uh, the money can't go where it's supposed to go because uh, we're not doing what we are supposed to do. Uh, if we just focused on kingdom work, uh, then the money would always uh, line up with God's purpose can I preach the way I feel uh, if we just focus on kingdom work uh, there would never be a shortage of resources uh, if we just focus on kingdom work uh, we wouldn't worry about the how uh, we worry about the what God what do you want us to do uh, God how can I reach my community uh, God how can we make a difference uh, if we go just focus on kingdom work uh, and stop worrying about what we don't have uh, and think about what God has given us uh, and use what he's given us uh, to accomplish his goal but when you're so worried about who's spending it and where it's going and I'm not saying we should not be accountable I'm not saying that we should not be purposed in fact I'm saying just that but we ought not be fearful amen walls in here God's wallet is bigger than ours but in order for God to move in us, 
we got to be willing to release what God has given us to do what God called us to do. But distractions of money has caused most churches to be crippled. They can't do missions because they got to pay for a building. Amen. Some churches have built these great big edifices, these great huge family life centers, and now they don't have the money to help the people that's right around their neighborhood. Money can become a distraction. And that distraction keeps you from your purpose. But that's not even the worst distraction and sin in the church. The biggest distraction and the biggest sin in the church is the sin of what's in it for me. If you talk to folk who bounce from church to church or don't go to church at all, you'll hear a reoccurring thing. That church no longer feeds me. That church no longer offers what I have and what I need. But can I drop something in your Holy Ghost bucket? When you function under that kind of mindset, you're functioning under a selfish mentality and God never called the church to be selfish. The Bible reminds us that we ought to esteem others greater than ourselves. And so when it comes down to working for the Lord, it's not about what I'm supposed to get. It's always about what I'm supposed to give. You got to realize that God did not call you in here to be a person that sucks up his resources. He called you to be a person that will be a producer in the kingdom of God. Can I preach the way I feel? Everything is in every church uh, you'll find love uh, in every church uh, you'll find joy uh, in every church uh, you'll find good worship uh, in every church uh, you'll find discipleship uh, in every church uh, and can I get real in the house uh, you'll find problems uh, in every church uh, you'll find bickering uh, in every church uh, you'll find backbiting uh, in every church uh, everything uh, is in every church uh, cause God is God everywhere uh, and people are people all the time uh, so don't function uh, under what's in it for me uh, you gotta function uh, what am I supposed to do for God but the devil will allow these four distractions to keep people from doing what God wants them to do the devil will allow these four distractions to bring about chaos and confusion bitterness and resentment divisiveness and division because he knows if I get you distracted on what I want you distracted on you miss the purpose of God but I stopped by to remind you the devil is a liar in the house uh, because when I go back to basics uh, if the church just gets back to what it's supposed to do and I'm not just talking progressive uh, I'm talking about the church all over the world uh, then what the church will look like is what we've seen uh, on Friday on Friday it wasn't about who got the credit uh, on Friday it wasn't about who's in control uh, on Friday it wasn't about who foot the bill uh, Friday was about reaching souls for Jesus uh, and so you had 146 churches uh, coming together as one body in Christ uh, and can I remind you because of that work uh, 472 people got saved on a Friday night uh, because the church got together and did its job uh, they went back to the basics so let me talk about the basics the great commission and I'm going to let you go home because when we look at this particular passage of scripture Jesus was about to leave terra firma he had already did his perfect work he had came into this world to show us how to live in the power of God but most importantly he came into this world that he might die on the cross for our sins on that Friday he who knew no sin became sin for us he allowed himself to do for us what we could not do he became the sins that we could, he, he could not commit he became your lying your stealing your backbiting your fornication your ears if you did it he became that for you can I pause long enough to shout right there because he just didn't do it for you he did it for me too and so I appreciate that great Friday when Jesus became sin for all of mankind that's because he loved us so much he wanted to work things out that we might get close to God he'd already went to the cross and died he'd already rose that third day with all power in his hand to show the world that I am he who gives life 
because life is in my name. He had already spent another 40 days talking to the disciples, teaching them what to do next, teaching them the things about the kingdom of God. And now he stands on the precipice of stepping out of time back into eternity. And as he got ready to go, he left the disciples with a word. He said, I need you now to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. And lo, I am with you always. He gave the church the Great Commission. Can I talk about that for a moment? He didn't tell the church to be a social club. He told us to be disciple makers. He didn't tell the church to revamp your community. He said be disciple makers. He didn't tell the church to be social services. He said be disciple makers. If we become disciple makers, then I stop by to tell you we'll see the community change around us. Can I walk through this a little bit further? The Great Commission requires four things and when we look at it you have to understand there are four things in the text that God wants us to be a part of if we are going to fulfill the great commission the first thing you got to understand is that has to be your priority you want to find out what's important to you check your bank account and check your calendar wherever you spend the most of your time and the most of your money, that's what's important to you. I know it's quiet. We got more folk that spend more money on their hair and nails than they do get to get somebody else saved. We got, some more, we got folk that will spend more money in a ball game than they will in the church where they got their deliverance from. We got more folk that will spend more money in a restaurant uh, than they will give it to the God that gave them the bread of heaven. Uh, you got to understand uh, that if you're really going to be a disciple maker, uh, that means that becomes my priority. Uh, that's on the forefront of my life. Uh, that takes precedence over everything. Uh, and so if I have an opportunity to glorify God uh, by being a good disciple, uh, I recognize that that's more important uh, than the standards of my job because the standards of my Jesus is greater. Uh, that's more important uh, than how my hair looks because uh, how I lo walk with God is greater uh, that's more important uh, than the satisfaction of my flesh because uh, the satisfaction of my soul is greater uh, you got to realize uh, if I'm going to be a disciple uh, I got to make sure I'm a disciple maker because uh, God just didn't tell you uh, to get all of this uh, he said you got to share what I blessed you with and I'm talking about the spiritual resources he blessed you with we got to understand that if you want to be a part of the Great Commission, that means every time I get a chance, I got to do my part in kingdom work. That means I'm asking God for ministry moments, not so that I can look good in front of somebody else, but so that I can be a blessing to the world, that the world will see how good our God is. When it's a priority, sometimes you'll go off the beaten path because God told you, I need you to leave this place and go over there because there's an assignment for you over there because somebody needs to know what God has done in your life. Somebody needs you to pray with them. Somebody needs you to cry with them. Somebody needs you to lift them up. If I am a disciple maker, God God's purpose uh, takes precedent over my pleasure. Can I preach it just a little bit further? See, the problem that we have is discipleship has become a movement of convenience for us. Amen, chairs in here. Most folk that come to church will come when they feel like it. Most church people that witness, witness every now and again. But when it is a priority, you look for opportunities to serve God. Well, lest I hold you too long, not only does the Great Commission, I should say the Great Commission require that it is a priority, but it also requires that you be proactive. You know the issue with the Western church? We have become so building central until we think that everything has to happen right here. We think that the only way ministry can be done uh, is that if we allow everything to function within these four walls and therefore we act like we got the building, uh, all we're supposed to do is open the doors and folks are supposed to come. But this is not filled of dreams. If you build it, they won't come. Uh, Jesus reminded us uh, that if you look at what he said, he didn't say tell them to come to you. Uh, he said you got to go to them. Can I preach the way I feel? Uh, the drug addict ain't coming to the house of the Lord, uh, but baby, you could go to where he is. Uh, the drug dealer is not coming to the house of the Lord, uh, but you can meet him on his 
his corner. And I'm not just talking about what I'm talking about. We got those folk in our family. The, the prostitute they come into the house of the Lord, but you can meet her where she is. The person that's down on their luck. They're not coming to the house of the Lord, but you can meet them where they are. Folk that think that God has forgotten about them. Jesus said, you gotta go to where they are. If you're gonna be a disciple maker, you gotta recognize it's gonna cause you to get out of your zone of convenience because you got a purpose to do. It's easy to let folk come to us but God didn't tell us to let them cut us. He told us to go to them. It's got to be priority. It's got to be proactive. I'm looking for opportunities to serve God. I'm looking for opportunity to help somebody know who I know. I'm looking for a chance to lift somebody up. Can I tell you why I'm looking for a chance? Because somebody had to lift me up. Can I tell you why I'm looking for a chance? Because somebody had to tell me about the goodness of Jesus. Can I tell you why I'm looking for a chance? Because had it not been for somebody to invest in my spirit, I'd still be the same wretch I was back in the day. Can I pause long enough to tell you what discipleship is supposed to look like? Discipleship should look like one up and one down. Uh, you got somebody pouring into you uh, and then you pour into somebody else uh, and that creates a spiritual chain uh, and as long as we hold the hands uh, if somebody poured into me uh, I pour into somebody else uh, and they pour into somebody else uh, the chain of glory gets longer and longer and we teach people how to walk with God. It's got to be a priority. You got to be proactive. But then it's got to be perpetual. <laughs> you know what's funny about today's church? You can get the folk to do just about anything if you put a time limit on it. Amen. Amen. Tell them you're going to have a 15-minute meeting, folk will show up. Leave it open-ended and you won't have anybody. Ask somebody to fast for two or three hours, they'll fast. Ask them to fast for 40 days, they look at you like you're crazy. We'll do things as long as the time is short. Uh, but baby, discipleship doesn't work like that. Uh, in order for a disciple to be made, uh, it takes some time. Uh, Jesus says baptizing them uh, and teaching them. Uh, that I-N-G on the end means it's got to be an ongoing process. Because uh, you don't get to where I am overnight. Uh, baby, nobody is born again perfect. Uh, you still got your old flaws. Uh, you still got your old issues. Uh, you still got your old habits. You still got some old strongholds, but I'm so glad if you got somebody to walk with you, you'll get stronger today than you were yesterday. If you got somebody to teach you, you'll be brighter tomorrow than you were on today. If you got somebody to pray with you, you'll be stronger in your next year than you were last year. Discipleship means it's perpetual. I'm always hooked up to my disciple. I'm always hooked up to my mentor I'm always uh, hooked up to the body because this is an ongoing thing this is not a thing of convenience because guess what the devil preys on your convenience the devil will wait till you are tired cause you not to pray not to get in your word not to get with your group that keeps you strong and that's when you start to slip into sin. Have you ever noticed most of the time when we sin the most, it's when we're out of the fellowship the most. Uh, but baby, the more I'm in fellowship, uh, the stronger I get to resist the temptation of the devil. Uh, that's because discipleship is perpetual. Uh, that means every day uh, I got to connect uh, with the way I get my strength. Uh, every day uh, I got to connect uh, with my prayer partners. Uh, every day uh, I got to connect uh, that I see the glory of God. It is perpetual. I know this ain't going to make you shout, but I pray that it make you better. Amen. If we're going to follow the Great Commission, it's got to be a priority. We got to be proactive. It's got to be perpetual. But lastly, it's got to be powerful. Amen. Jesus said in verse 18, all power is given unto me. And can I drop something in your bucket? When we become discipleship oriented, when we become disciple makers, 
that's when we really start to operate in the power that God has for you. But can I preach it the way I really feel? Because the problem that we have is we have misused what power looks like. We think power is supposed to make you get up and do cartwheels and spin on your head. We think power is supposed to cause you to say, bought a Honda, should have bought a Honda. We think power is supposed to make you dance till your clothes are wet. But baby, that's not power. That's emotion. Power changes things. Power rearranges things. And Jesus said, if you do what I commanded, lo I'm with you all the way uh, to the end of the world uh, power is being connected to Jesus Christ uh, power is knowing that God's got a hold on us uh, power is understanding uh, that greater is he uh, that's within me power is knowing that God is able uh, to do exceedingly but can I tell you what power looks like power don't look like big buildings Power don't look like fancy buses. Power don't look like big budgets. Power look like renewed lives. Power look like folk that didn't think that God loved them. Now walk in the love of Jesus. Power look like folk that used to put up the crack pipe, uh, put the pipe down and pick up their Bible. Uh, power looks like folk who used to lay around uh, from this bed to that bed. Uh, now are walking holy with Jesus. Uh, power saying black people and white people uh, come together under the umbrella of Jesus Christ. Uh, you want to talk about power? I got news for you. Uh, power comes uh, by being connected with God. Don't worry about the neighborhood changing. Ask God help us to minister in the neighborhood and then watch that change be the most effective change. Because it's not about the money. It's not about the color. It's about the spiritual condition. And can I, get news? Can I give you some good news? The folk that God is sending to this neighborhood, he's sending them here so that we can minister to them. Not just the folk across the street, but the folk in them $400,000 townhouses. Not just the folk that look like us, but to the folk that don't look like us. Not to the folk that drive what we drive, but to the folk that's on the bus and drive better than we drive. Not to the folk that work where we work, uh, but folk that work in places where we wish we could work. Uh, because I stopped by to tell you, uh, when you function in God's power, God bridges the gap. Uh, and now you got a body in Christ that can do anything. Uh, because we can turn the world upside down. Then you don't have to worry about folk taking over. Because now they become a part. You don't have to worry about locking your doors from your neighbor's children. Because now your neighbor is holding your children accountable and then they get them saved. We got to get back to basics. Focus on discipleship making. And if you do that, you're not worried about who get the credit because God gets the glory. You're not worried about where the money is going because all of the money is really directed so that we can make disciples. You're not worried about any of those things because you want God to and the people to know God to come together. Let's get back to basics. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Can we stand to our feet?